In this video, we're going to start to look at the second derivative. In the first video, we considered the first derivative and we looked at three different quantities. The first one was s, that was displacement, and we measured displacement in metres. The second one was t, that was time, and we measured time in seconds. The third one was v, velocity, and we measured velocity in metres per second. We considered ds dt the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. We saw that ds dt, the first derivative, was velocity. If you like now, we could just say distance divided by time is speed. We then looked at differentiating velocity with respect to time. We saw dv dt was a, which is acceleration. Now, instead of writing dv dt, I could have written d2s by dt squared. So if I've differentiated once to get velocity, I could differentiate again to get acceleration. The second derivative is the rate of change of the rate of change. Now initially that seems quite a bizarre concept. As we go through the units though, we will look at exactly how this works and some of the applications of it. So let's consider now uh, a function. Let's say we've got s is equal to 2t plus 1. So what I've got now is s as a function of t. Displacement is two lots of time plus one. Now this is a linear function. If we differentiate this ds dt, we're going to end up with a constant of two. So this now gives me a constant velocity. So what we end up with then is constant velocity. So we don't have now a t in here at all. It's just going to constantly be two. Now if I differentiate it again, d2s by dt squared, we would end up with zero. If we consider now what's happening here, if we've got constant velocity, we've got zero acceleration. And that's a nice way of looking at this. Now, if we had s is equal to, let's say, 3t squared plus 2t, so we've got now displacement as a function of time, this time it's quadratic, ds dt, we're going to have now 6t plus 2. I've multiplied down by the power and dropped the power by 1. So if I went, wanted to graph this now, what I would have is a linear function. So this now is velocity. If I differentiated again d2s by dt squared, I would end up now with a constant, and that would be 6. So what we'd end up then with is a constant acceleration. And the graphs that we drew in the previous videos would show this. So my displacement is quadratic, my velocity is linear, and then we have this constant right here. So I've taken the second derivative, and we know that the gradient of the line of this graph is going to give us the acceleration. So that's a brief intro. In terms of the ins and outs of this, um, in later units you really do pick this up. So for example, we can use the second derivative to find maximum and minimum points on functions and the maximum and minimum values. But for now, we see the second derivative as the rate of change of the rate of change. I've used s and t. If we look at the function notation, if we have now the original function f of x, the first derivative we've seen is f dashed of x, the second derivative is f double dashed of x. If we have y as a function of x, so we looked at the Leibniz notation, the first derivative is dy by dx. The second derivative is d2y by dx squared. And for some functions, quite clearly, we can have higher derivatives. So in this unit, we're kind of looking at this as quite a mechanical process of simply working out the second 